Dr. Ken here with you again. We're up to AC Physics exercises number four. Now in number four, we're looking at resistors, inductors and capacitors, R, L and C, connected together in different series combinations. So resistors in series with the resistors, resistors in series with inductors and capacitors, and then resistors, inductors and capacitors, all in series with each other. So here's our first problem. 4.1, the circuit below that consists of an inductor in series with a resistive heater element. The voltage across the heater is 200 volts and in phase with the current. The voltage drop across the inductor is 120 volts, leading the current by 45 degrees. Using a phasor diagram, determine the value of the supply and the phase angle of the supply Dr. Ken's rule one is draw a diagram, which is what I have done here. So let's have a look at our diagram. We know we have a 50 hertz supply, but we do not know its size. And we do not know its angle. But what we do know is that we have a choke inductor. So here, it's got a resistor in series with it, so it's not imperfect. It's, it's a practical inductor. We've got an L, and then we've got an independent R. And we've got 200 volts across our resistor. So that's all the information we're given, except we also know that the current is leading by 75 degrees. So I total the current here plus 75 degrees. So we build a phasor diagram, we put in our reference. As you can see, I've already put in a scale of 50 volts to every 10 millimeters and the reference. And you can see here, I've got 200 volts, roughly about four centimeters in length. And it's in phase, so it's the resistor. So let's just make that really clear. So it's this one here that we're able to put in because it's in phase with the reference. The next one is our 120 volts. And we know that it's creating this 75 degree shift between it and the current. So in here, they've told us that we have our 75 degrees. So we're going to have to add these two together. So basically we needed to put our compass on the 200, then put the point of our compass on here and scribe an arc. Do the same here, measure the length of this line, or this phaser with the compass, put the point on here and then scribe an arc. Then go from the origin to where the two arcs cross. I'm not a very good drawer with my... And out here somewhere is going to be the volts total applied to the circuit and this angle in here is going to be our voltage relationship to the current. So you can see here I've put in the first phase. Now I've put in the second one and finally 
Here's the third one, and I've simply scaled off the length. So the length of the phaser was scaled off, giving me 275 volts. Got my protractor out, and I measured that angle in there. So we plus. 25 because we're in front of the current reference and we're rotating anti-clockwise in this direction so it has to be a plus reading on the degrees so our voltage here applied to this circuit is 275 with an angle leading of 25 degrees and I can either write lead or I could just put a plus sign in front here my D didn't come out too well did it so here's a nice long one for us um, a resistance of 180 ohms is connected in series with a coil which has an inductance of 0.07 henrys and an internal resistance of 50 ohms the circuit is connected to 220 volts 50 hertz supply and all this stuff we have to calculate so they want to know what the total circuit resistance is the inductive reactance the circuit impedance the circuit current the circuit phase angle, the inductor's impedance, the inductor's phase angle, the voltage drop across the resistor, and the voltage drop across the inductor. So the first thing we do, of course, is we draw the circuit diagram. I can't overemphasize draw the circuit diagram. So that's what I've done here. I've drawn the circuit diagram. You can see it's a practical inductor, and my practical inductor has 50 ohms, its inductance is 0.7 henrys and my resistor is 180 ohms and I'm connected to a 50 hertz 220 volt supply so now I've got to answer all my questions so here we go so the total circuit resistance is pretty easy it's just the current in the inductor IR plus the resistor outside it so I have 50 ohms inside the inductor and I have 180 ohms outside the inductor so my overall resistance nice and simple 230 ohms just got to add them together and if I was to do a phaser diagram of that just to make it really really clear Remember, here's the current as reference, and I would have 50 ohms. And then I would have another uh, what, 180 ohms from the origin, which would probably put me about here. But then I've got to add the two of them together. I'll just change my pen color. So... I'll just now add that onto there. So my overall resistance is this one, giving me 230 ohms. So it is a phaser addition, but we can do it algebraically. Why? Because they are resistors and the resistors are always in phase with the current so we can just do it algebraically the next thing we have to do is we have to do the inductive reactance and again the formula for inductive reactance is 2 pi fl so all we have to do is take the information that was given to us just change my pen color back so they told us 50 Hertz to where we get this from. Here's our 50 Hertz. 
they told us we had 0.7 of a Henry in the inductor, so that's where that comes from. Uh, so it was just a matter of then doing the math, and the XL or the inductive reactance is 220 ohms. The next one was to find the circuit impedance. And again, this is a little bit more tricky now because we're going to have to use a little bit of Pythagoras. So we've got to go to our impedance triangle. And we had a total resistance from the previous question of 230. And our impedance of our choke was 220, giving us the other side of the triangle is the total impedance Z. So all we had to do now was add, every, oh, well not add everything up, but 220 squared plus 230 squared, take the square root of all of that, giving us a Z of 320 ohms. D, the circuit current. Well, if we have the, uh, the overall impedance, the I total is simply the volts total divided by the Z total, which is what we have here, I total divided by Z. So we end up with our 220 volts. There's our 220 volts divided by our Z. That was our Z total. And that gave us 688 milliamps. E. We now need to know what the phase angle is. So that's in here. This is the phase angle is in here. So this is the phase angle. And the best way to get that is to get the cos or the cos to the minus one. So if we want to know what the angle is straight up, not just the ratio, it's simply 320. Sorry, 230 divided by 320. It's easy to get that back the front. So that's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse gives us the ratio, but the ratio to the minus one gives us 44 degrees. So theta there equals 44 degrees. F, find the inductor's impedance. Well, again, we're going to come back to our good old Pythagoras and do a impedance triangle, but this time we're only after ZL, so we've got the 50 ohms of the resistance, that's the 50 in, in here, the internal resistance of 50, our reactive resistance, or our inductive reactance at 220, so it's pretty easy then again just to use Pythagoras to go 220 squared plus 50 squared, take the square root of all of that. Our ZL comes in at 226 ohms. And G, what's the phase angle? Again, the phase angle is this one in here off the horizontal. Here's the phase angle that we're looking for. And again, we're just going to use cos. So the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse using cos ends up at 77 degrees. Next one, H, voltage drop across the resistor. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the current through the resistor. So if we take the overall Z 
and divide it into the overall voltage, it's going to give us the overall current, which was 688 milliamps. If we know that the current through the circuit, because the series circuit is going to be the same all the way through the circuit, there the voltage drop across the resistor will simply be volts is equal to current multiplied by the resistance is 0.688 multiplied by 180, giving us 123.8 volts. And I think finally, a voltage across the inductor, same process again, but we're now going to use the Z across the inductor. So our current multiplied by the Z across the inductor, which is 0.688 times 20, 226 ohms, gives us 855.5 volts. So lots and lots of maths there. But uh, once you understand how it works across series circuits with R, L and C, it's reasonably straightforward. So here's another one. Uh, very, very similar. But this time we have a resistor of 80 ohms in series with a capacitor of 67 microfarads. Applied voltage is 379 volts at 60 hertz and again should always draw the picture. Draw the circuit diagram, make sure you get the picture in your head correctly. So this is 4.3, a resistance of 80 ohms is connected in series with a 67 microfarad capacitor to a 379 volt 60 hertz supply. Calculate A, capacitive reactance, C, B I should say, circuit impedance, C, current, D, circuit phase angle E, voltage drop across the resistor, and F, voltage drop across the capacitor, and then finally G, the phase diagram for the circuit. So the capacitive reactance, pretty straightforward, XC equals 1 on 2 pi FC, so it's just a standard formula for capacitive reactance. We simply take the data, and XC is 1 on 2 pi 60, times 67 times 10 to the minus 6, remember it's got to be to the minus 6 for microfarads, gives us a capacitive reactance of 39.59 ohms. So B, we will now want to find the circuit impedance. Well, we've got all or the major sides of the triangle. So again, it's just Pythagoras' theorem. We have our resistor, which they told us, and we've just calculated this side at 39.59. So we just need to square both, add them together, take the square root, and Z is the impedance, giving us 89.26 ohms for the impedance. C, circuit current. Circuit current is just pretty well application of Ohm's law. So our current is going to be our total voltage divided by our total impedance, which we just worked out. So we're going to have to take 30, sorry, 379 volts and divide it by 89.26. That gives you 4.24 amps. D, just need to find the phase angle. We've done this in the previous problem. Hasn't changed. So in here, this is the this is theta. So we just need to find the cos of this angle, which is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So there's our hypotenuse, there's our adjacent. And rather than just take the ratio, we actually take the ratio, we take it cos to the minus one, and it takes us directly to the angle. So our theta equals 20. 6.3 degrees. The voltage drop across the resistor, first got to determine the current, but we get that from above, so we already predetermined the current at 4.24 amps, and we're back to just reasonably Ohm's law, so the voltage across the resistance is the resistor plus the current, or sorry, multiplied by the current through the resistor. We're going to have 80 Multiplied by 4.24, we're going to have 336 volts drop across the resistor.
Next, the bodies drop across the capacitor. Same deal, except we're now going to use the XC, or the capacitive reactants, multiplied by the current, which is 39.59, multiplied by 4.24, giving us 168 volts. So here's our phasor diagram I asked us to draw. So voltage across, get my voltage symbol, so voltage across the resistor, our voltage across the capacitor, and then when you do the scale in, that should come out to 379 volts, which is what we calculated it would be. Well, that was the applied voltage, if you remember. That was the applied voltage that we came with. We didn't have to calculate it. They told us that was it is. When, it's, when I scaled it off, it came out to exactly that. So you should get exactly that on your scale. And something they didn't tell us, but we now know, is that it's at plus 30 degrees. So all I did was get my protractor. I measured that angle in there. And that came out at 30 degrees. So we already knew that the applied voltage was 379 volts, but they hadn't told us the phase angle. And now we also know the phase angle, which is plus 30 degrees. So our next problem, 4.4, a series circuit consists of the following, a 20 ohm resistor, a 0.3 Henry pure inductor, a 63 microfarad capacitor, an applied voltage of 200 volts at 50 hertz, determine the following. A, the circuit impedance, B, the circuit current, C, the circuit phase angle, D, the voltage drop across the resistor, E, the voltage drop across the inductor, F, the voltage drop across the capacitor, and finally, draw the phasor diagram of all of the above. So A, with circuit impedance, we need to find XL and XC. So we find XL with 2 pi FL, and we know it's 2 pi 50.3 Henry's, gives us 94.24 ohms. The next one is the XC, which is 1 on 2 pi FC, which is 1 on 2 pi 50, 62 times 10 to the minus 3, giving us 50 ohms. So they told us our resistor was 20 ohms, so that's nice and easy on our impedance triangle, but we have to minus XL minus XC, so our XL minus our XC, so we have our 94 minus 51, which is 43. So 43 squared plus 20 squared, take the square root of all of that, and our impedance is 48.0. Seven. So I'll say it again and again, it's important to draw the circuit diagram and it's important to draw the phasor diagrams or the impedance triangles, all those bits and pieces. Effectively that impedance triangle is a phasor diagram. So B, I total, well we know that if we have the V total and the Z total, we can use Ohm's law to get the I total, which is what we've done here. So we've taken 200 volts divided it by 48.7, which was the Z total, giving us 4.16 amps as our total current. Then C, phase angle. Again, we're just going to go the cos because it's nice and easy. So the cos of this angle in here is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So there's our adjacent divided by our hypotenuse and cos to the minus 1 will take us straight to the angle and we have an angle of 
41 degrees. The voltage drop across the resistor, again Ohm's law, as long as we have the current, which we do, and we have the resistance, therefore the voltage across the resistor is 4.16 amps multiplied by 20 because it's 20 ohms giving us 83.2 volts E same thing again except now we're going to use XL so 4.16 multiplied by 94.2 gives us an XL of 392 volts 392 volts across the inductor. The voltage drop across the capacitor found exactly the same way except this time we use the XC. So 4.16 current multiplied by 50.53 ohms gives us 210 volts across the capacitor. And if you haven't already realized those voltages are way bigger than the applied voltage. So Here's the phaser diagram. Voltage across the resistor on the horizontal. Voltage across the capacitor up vertically. The orange one, vertical across the inductor. Then all I did was subtract them. So here's the green one sitting on top of the orange one facing 180 degrees back the other way effectively giving me the result so that's my 390 minus my 210 giving me 180 at minus 90 through here so that's this one here minus 90 now there's my minus 90 of course, I now have to do a phasor addition between the voltage and this one, and I've just parallelogrammed here and here, gone back to my origin, drawn in the black phasor, and this is my applied voltage and its relationship. So it's at minus 75 degrees, and of course, it was already at 200. They already told us it was at 200. The applied voltage was 200. So my phaser diagram came out at exactly the right voltage. And again, the thing that I didn't have before, I now my, my phase angle overall is minus 75. So that's the end of doing phaser maths around RLC series circuits. I hope you've learnt and enjoyed something out of all of that.